Oh, I've got a talent with me on Locked On Warriors today, the former host of uh, Inside the NBA, a former host for NBA TV. You do all sorts of stuff. I know baseball is your sport as well. But Casey Stern joins me. We're going to talk some Draymond Green, some Warriors, Kevin Durant, obviously just because he's holding up the whole goddamn world right now in the NBA. We're going to break it all down. We're going to have fun. This is Locked On Warriors. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. You follow the host of the YouTube show and podcast Unfiltered on Twitter at Casey Stern. The man used to host uh, a, a wide variety of media platforms and shows. How you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. Uh, always a pleasure, Cyrus. How are you, man? How's everything? It's, it's, good, to be, it's good to be locked on. It's, rather, <laughs> it's better than that than being locked in anywhere. I've been locked in, in pl- at points in my life, uh, figuratively, <laughs> well, you of course. Let's start off with one of your former colleagues, Charles Charles Barkley. Uh, he was at a golf tournament uh, recently where Stephen Curry was playing. It's at Lake Tahoe. Uh, it's an annual celebrity thing. It's it's a blast for the for the people playing, for the spectators. And Barkley talked about the Warriors, and for the first time in a long time, he was not being disrespectful. In fact, he was actually uh, uh, shedding compliments about Bob Myers uh, for his incredible ten year run now as a GM. Uh, he he briefly talked about Stephen Curry and had a backhanded compliment saying. That Steph's now somewhere between 10 and 20. He's like tied with Isaiah Thomas for being the best point guard in the world. And then when someone said, well, what about Magic Johnson? He's had a different spin on that. Let's start to start with this. Uh, how was it working which, with Charles? Which is Burton weird, by the way, because Magic even, even though Magic Johnson is 6'9", he was a point guard. So if we're going to say Steph, who's traditionally a shooter and not a point guard anyway, is a point guard, you can't say Magic's not a point guard because he's tall. Now, I wouldn't know anything <laughs> about being tall, but you can't say that Magic's not a point guard because he's tall. So if Magic is in the point guard category, he's the best point guard of all time. And then the rest of the people will be behind agree. that wholeheartedly agree uh, what is it like working i know you told me on a different show but this is a whole new audience much larger audience what is it like working uh with that tnt crew um i i, I do i always loved when you're on there you usually would fill in for ernie johnson uh to me that's my favorite show covering the nba what is it like working for nba on tnt and for nba tv because there, there there's a synergy there um it's again for most people who love the nba that's their favorite programming you were a part of that for a long time What is that like, man? Share the experience, please. Well, first of all, it's the greatest studio show in sports in the history of television, right? So, I mean, even being the small part, and the part that I played was in growing up in New York when you go to Broadway and you wanted to see the star of, like, you went to the producers, but instead of Nathan Lane, you got me. Like, you know, it's like, like, you know, BDJ's understudy. But regardless, um, you know, it was... Being on that set is is pretty crazy. I mean, honestly, the, the biggest part is is just behind the scenes, the crew and all the pieces and the packages and the fun things they put together with the gone fish, all of that, the work that goes into that. But the dynamic of the egos and the personalities and the fact that I can and honestly say, and I, I wouldn't be asking you that, you know, Chuck and, and Shaq, you're talking about larger than life personalities but really good people, like really mm-hmm. super nice and good people. Great to the crew, didn't treat you like, you, you know, they were better than you. There was none of that. I remember um, we did a bit, one of my favorite Shaq stories is we we did a bit where it was like the neato stat of the night. And we, instead of doing that in lieu of that, we were playing mini golf at the end of, of an episode of Inside. And there was a bet that had gone on and I had lost, Shaq had won and we'd all bet 20 bucks and Candace Parker was on there with me and I think it was Kenny. And at the end, I tried to give Shaq 20 bucks because I'm a man of my word. If I lost, I lost. So after we got off the air, I went to give him 20 bucks. We were still on set. I handed it to him. He took with his hand, which is like larger than my head. He took, he he handed it. He said, uh, the back of Shakovia doesn't need your funds. (laughs) <laughs> I said, I said, okay, fair enough. But that's, but his personality is that like he's just he's a jokester. Chuck is the same way. 
uh, being involved in it. And, you know, look, I did four years there, on, you know, seven at Turner, but four on the net basketball side and with NBA TV. And um, all those guys are great. And, and still like Grant and, you know, 3D and Smitty and a lot of those guys are still friends of mine. And, and it's it's I'm blessed to know a lot of the people that I worked with over there. Absolutely, dude. I've, I, we've had Chris and Ledlow on this show. Uh, we had Jared Greenberg on this show. And it seems just like whoever's making the personnel decisions there, that's the brains because they just keep picking the right people time and time and again um and you're missed brother at some point i'm sure we're going to see you on thank tv you. again thank uh you. yeah it's it's I, i'm just so sorry about everything you've had to deal, deal with but you're such a good dude man and i know i know think great things going to happen for you again soon i, appreciate I gotta that, ask man. you this and i asked jared greenberg this i asked Kristen ledlow this what do you think i like it's obviously a bit to a large degree but what is the the genesis behind charles barkley's disdain for the golden state warriors in the san francisco bay area if you don't know at least what's your theory it's shtick I mean, I, I think, you know, once, once like, you know, Chuck will throw out bait, like the stuff that he did a few years ago with like, you know, Toronto was, was going to win it all. Right. Like, you know, and he, he, if he would have said it every year, he would have been right once. Right. So he, he just said it in the <laughs> seasons, um, you know, it's like when Chris Berman used to pick the bills every year and was never right. Yes. I mean, he just wasn't right any of the times, unfortunately. Um, but like, it's because he'll throw something out there and he'll hear. And, and by the way, this is, and, and I mean this in, in in a positive way, like whether you volatile personalities, whether you like them or not, like Conor McGregor is brilliant. And I've said yes. this many times, like he is, he's brilliant. What he has done with his brand is brilliant. Floyd Mayweather may be like an ass, but he's brilliant. Like what these guys do when they see that you hook onto something that they can make vo volatile, forget even before viral existed, they know how to plug into that and to work you almost like a bit in WWE, like a heel. And to me, that's what Chuck does, is he sees something that everybody else is kind of tacking on to, right? And, 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 you know, is sticking in their craw, and then he just lays into it. So I think the genesis of it was probably just him being Charles, saying something ridiculous. I mean, it's a man who told me that he thought for 35 years of his life that when you chew gum, you're supposed to swallow it afterwards. <laughs> and like, and, and legitimately, like, and, and I, we had a long conversation about it and I remember saying to him like this cannot be really happening to me and he said that he just thought you he really legitimately like I watched him swallow a piece of gum and he's telling me this is what I was taught like who taught you how do you not know like I, I guess you don't have conversations about that but whatever but the same kind of a guy who would do that is somebody who if he sees that there's a way to rib you or kind of get into you he's gonna do that yeah that's that is an incredible story <laughs> I, I remember when i was a kid people would tell you that if you swallowed gum it would just stay in your intestines for seven right. years i, I well, guess if, it you, comes if out, you get your but... face stuck and if you make bad faces anymore and pout at me kids your face gonna get stuck like that like yes yeah so apparently it does just go through your system but i i I'm I'm amazed and I'm happy he has not suffered serious health consequences from that. That yeah. you're right, like, I guess I would have I would have followed up in hindsight with the question: Who the hell taught you that? Because yeah, that is I, asinine. I'm just glad he's not uh, a, a baseball player because Big League Chew would have been really hard to swallow down. He probably you know oh was doing God. a lot better job with whatever. But he, but I mean, look, it's about a guy who's never been. He literally has never used an ATM machine in his whole life. And this is now I I will say this is as of three years ago when I asked okay. him this and we talked about it on set. He never had used an ATM machine in his life. Now, clearly that tells you how many handlers and how much money he's got, number one. But, but who wouldn't, like, go to an ATM machine? Like, how have you not been in one spot? He had no idea how to use it. And he's, it's not it's not legitimate. But he is just – he's a different cat. We're talking about a different kind of a person. So I think once he realizes that he's got you, he kind of lays into you a bit. Yeah. Oh, man, that's – I love him. I, it's You're right. He's the only person on the planet who uh, can say things I disagree with, and I just shrug my shoulders and say, I don't care. I love him. He's Chuck. He's just – he's a – He's an icon, man. There's there's no other there's no debating about that. Uh, I'm gonna give some love to Built Bar, a longtime sponsor of the show, real quick. Again, if you're trying to lose weight, I'm trying to do that right now, and you want to put something in your body that is not toxic for you, Built Bar is the way to go. It's covered in 100% real chocolate. You've got a wide variety of flavors. On average, each each uh, uh, Built Bar is only 160 calories, whereas your typical candy bar is closer to 270 calories. Your typical can candy bar has 28 to 32 grams of sugar. A built bar only has four grams of sugar on average, a wide variety of flavors to choose from. And the protein in there, on average, you get 17 grams of protein per built bar, and it's collagen protein, which I'm leaving to go absorbs. get some built bars. I'm, Dude, I'm I will send you built bars for dinner instead. 
instead. I mean, honestly, seriously, those I will are good send some to you, Casey. Right the, yes, I will send those to you because like I'm on a mission to lose like 10, 15 pounds. I just literally did nothing for six months and gained weight. So now I'm just like, all right, I got, I, I'm, I, the penance has arrived. So Bill Bar is my savior. Go to Bill.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, the promo code is LOCK15 for 15% off at Bill.com. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available on every pot and every platform. Casey Stern's free and available on Twitter. You can follow him on Twitter. And at single, Casey Stern. free and available everywhere, including Twitter. <laughs> I'm sure our audience is just a flush. Yeah, with, I, ex- with, uh, I actually do the opposite of what people do where they're like, I don't accept DMs. I accept DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Wide open. Wide DM open. me anytime. Long- yeah, no problem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you, you get the, you've got the national perspective on things. I mean, uh, you know, you, and again, I want to give love to your show, Unfiltered. It's available on YouTube. All you got to do, I'm guessing, is just search for Unfiltered, right? Or is, there, yeah. is that is it or that? put my name in? It, you know, either way, it, it it'll come up. But yeah, you can again, also anywhere where you can get your podcast and free and available, just like it's host. There you go. Bam. Beautiful. Single and available. Uh, and by the way, you have the picture of your kids behind you. Congratulations, brother. I can't. Thank you. That's that's life right there, man. That's what it's all about. I appreciate all that. Life is making up. noise in the background. So if anybody hears it, they're also free and available. I'll sell you two of them for the right price. <laughs> On loan or permanent? <laughs> that's what, that's what, <laughs> what is your take of the what? I guess your what is your take of the Warriors now that they won their fourth title in eight years? It was baffling to me that people uh we're like shocked that they won the championship i you know i predicted them to win last august and people still ask me they're like dude how did you figure that out i'm like how did i figure it out for five straight years they went to the nba finals and won three of them teams take years off sometimes here and there uh in your opinion for from from a national media member perspective uh why were people so like shocked about the warriors and and how do you feel about their offseason going into next year well i, I think two things one i th- think people were unsure about clay's return to health and how successful he'd be and i think the other part of it is they thought i think in hindsight most of us would have thought that he would have needed to be a bigger piece of the pie in terms of the production right at whatever health level he was going to be then he ended up being because they didn't see the net gain of wiggins in the next step and jordan pool or, or what you would get out of gary payton and even you know even beyond that really because look it, 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 everything rotation short when you get to a playoff in a postseason but all of the guys they had to use on the bench, especially if you knew that you weren't going to get anything out of Wiseman and you weren't sure whether or not you know, Clay was going to be really up to snuff health-wise until late in the year, you would have thought there's no way. We're going to talk about Draymond. You had the resurgence of Draymond back to the Draymondian level that people expected him to be at. It took away from it being all about, well, we don't have enough and Clay's not even Clay anymore. And, you know, yeah, look, Steph did amazing things, but Steph has done amazing things before. It's not like, you know, people act like it's not like Steph Curry just showed up like around the corner. Oh, like this is the isn't that the first time we saw him? Like when you see that it's been five seasons since he didn't hit a three in a game, it kind of tells you something. Right. So which we saw take place in the finals. Right. In one of those games against the Celtics. So so I think the, the supporting cast and the growth of it and then supporting the fact that it didn't have to all be about Clay's health to me. And, and look, you watch it every day. You probably know better than me in really honing in just singularly on what this team was doing. But I don't think people gave enough credit to what those supporting cast members were capable of last season. Dude, so the Warriors this offseason and we only got a few minutes with you. I know I'm going to let you go. I promise. Uh, the, the Warriors this offseason, basically what it came out to was they traded Gary Payton the second. They traded uh, Nemanja Bjelica, who is grossly underrated, in my opinion. His defense on Jason Tatum in the finals, forget about it. And they traded Otto Porter Jr. And what they got back is James Wiseman, who didn't play a minute last year, and now he's going to be expected to play considerable minutes. Uh, they, they added Jermichael Green, who I love, and they added uh, uh, DiVincenzo. What are your thoughts on that? That this hypothetical trade, it's not officially a trade, but that's yeah. Basically- look, I, I think Jermichael Green is what is one of those guys who is going to do a lot of things for you. That unless you're really honing in on him, there are going to be a lot of fans who are like, "Who is that Jeff Green, the one who was on all those winning teams?" No, it's not him. But you know, it's, they're not really going to be sure who who <laughs> Jamarcus Russell. No, no, no Jermichael Green. Um, I'm laughing because Jermichael like no Green. One else, I, thought that, I think that all the time, no one else has ever said that. 
you yeah. just you get me, man. Continue on. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, but but it's true. I I because he gets kind of lost in the shuffle. He's like a seven or eight rotational guy, and you know he's gonna play a bunch of minutes. He's got seven rebounds. He hit a couple of open jumpers that you saw. He extended a play, and then he fouled out. And it's like what just happened? But he's gonna have value for you. He's a good player, and I think to me, Divincenzo is interesting because you know he further away from from injury. So health wise for him, now you get him full season. The Warriors are the kind of a culture and a team that makes players around them better. Look what we saw in the past out of the JaVale McGee's of the world, yes. let alone what you got out of Otto Porter. And make they find their role, and Steve's great at that, right? And then they accentuate what is your best asset. That's what it's supposed to This shouldn't be rocket science, like finding something that a guy does well. Even Chenzo, athletic guy, can defend, right? He's going to be able, I think, to, especially on the run with this team, to be able to get up and down the floor with them. And I love that. I love that. And I think... The defense that they play and the activity as a team that they bring defensively, DiVincenzo, anybody who's watched him play going back to college, is going to fit right into that. So I like him. Mm. I do. Oh, my God. I hear I hear kids. I think I hear a dog, too. I know you got to run. Um, do we have time for one more question? Or do you yeah, have of, course. of course. Of course. Yeah. Quick, real quick here. Draymond Green yesterday came out and basically reports are stating that he wants a max contract extension. If you are Bob Myers, who, again, is incredibly, in my opinion, and Charles Barkley was – uh, uh, praising him uh, j- during that golf tournament we talked about. You know, Myers' track record is incredible. Um, if you're Bob Myers, do you give Draymond Green a max extension to lock him up for the next five years? You can't. I, I mean, I, I don't think I don't think you can. I, I think you want to because, you know, here's, here's what's going to happen. They're not going to, I don't think. And then what's going to happen is we're going to hear, well, they didn't understand the value of Draymond Green. Trust me, you don't need to be like, you know, a, a, brilliant to understand the value of Draymond Green, especially if you own the team or run it. I'm pretty sure you have an idea, right? Look at all the things they dealt with in behind the scenes and with Draymond Green in terms of, you know, not only through the KD situation, but, you know, having to kind of, you know, babysit somewhat, right? Going back to all the way where he was, you know, thrown out of a game and not able to play during a big final that they blew and lost to lead, right? All of that you do because you know the value of what he does. He also is coming off of finals where all of that was in the forefront. We know what he is. But when you're thinking about this franchise, and we discussed this in the KD talks, but in general, mm-hmm. what are you doing with Wiggins? What is he? Is he going to be a guy that you extend keep long term? What's Jordan Poole for you, right? You There's only so much money to go around, right? So I, I can't keep everybody. If I have Steph at the level he is, and it's going to be the Steph and Clay show, and I believe that Wiggins and Poole can be the supporting cast, it may take two players to do what Draymond does, and they even combined may not do exactly as well as he does it, but you can win despite that. And I know that, and I'm saying it purposely this way, Sarah, because I, I really, I'm a, I'm a Draymond Green fan. I am. Yeah, and I, 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 I love the way he plays, and even though they're not counting stats and all of that, I, I think it's, the value is unquestioned. But in their situation, at his age, being there for years already, it, it you, you just can't do it. I, I don't think yeah. they're able to do it. Another team's going to see more value in, okay, Draymond can come do all the Draymond things, be the glue for all the things we haven't been able to do. A team like Dallas goes and gets Draymond yeah. Green as an example. is the first team I think of. I've got Luka Doncic as a star. I want to go ahead and have, find my Marty McSorley for my Wayne Gretzky, right? Here's Here's, here's I'm giving you random references, but no, you follow me. Yes, he, here's here's Draymond Green. If he goes to Dallas, he might be able to unite and glue the whole team together, and then all of a sudden it works out, and you can go ahead and do that. You can't do it with what the Dubs have right now financially to figure out with some of that supporting cast. I'm curious would your you, take. Do you, you think they will? I, I don't think well, that they will. Would you? Well, I was going to ask you this. Do you think would they? Do you think they would change their tune? And would you change your tune a little bit if they would revise the CBA, which is rumored to happen? Uh, where they're going to stop penalizing, uh, uh, they're they're, they're going to stop implementing tax penalties uh, for draft picks. So if that happened, would you reconsider this? Whole yeah, I, I, it, well, because it, it it reshuffles your deck. It's almost like you know refinancing your home. Like all of a sudden now, you have assets that you didn't have to go put towards this. The way it is right now, it's difficult. The problem I have with it is, you know, look, look Draymond is it, certainly confidence is not an issue for him, right? Um, <laughs> 
but I wish to, I had to, his confidence for a single game, man. Right. Like I'm, I'm about to venture where but you are. But the grass I, is I, always I green. The grass is always <laughs> greener. And for a guy who's going to make, look, they would pay him a lot of money anyway, even if it's not a max, right? He'd get a really nice, nice deal. You've already got a media job that's set up for you. You're already working in it, and I'm sure getting paid very handsomely for responses for your podcast of your dream on and all of that. It, to Hell me, yeah. he's cutting off his nose to spite his face. Like, if you go to Dallas or you go to the Lakers, right, or go to Brooklyn and all of those teams are feasible, right, and you go get your max deal somewhere, are you really going to be happier or win the way you would win here? And is it worth $20, 25000000 million over a four- or five-year span to do when you're going to net gain that anyway? Uh, for yeah. me, I think he's making a mistake. And, you, you know, he, look, he's not out kicking his coverage because someone will pay it the grass is always greener on the other side go ask kd if he'd rather even money right now be in brooklyn or be with the dubs i'm sure he'd rather be back by the bay oh dude i could talk to you all day man i wish you were not in freaking georgia so that we could be wingmen together but um look man you've got a beautiful family those Appreciate kids are incredible you. how many dogs do you have i heard a dog barking i've got one but the three kids okay. are i think they each took a leg so he's got one left by the time i get out there <laughs> what kind of dog what kind of dog are we talking uh, about golden retriever Oh, bravo, dude. Look at you with the picture-perfect family. All you need is a supermodel sitting right by you, and then you're set. Again, I got um, DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Just search Casey Stern, whether it's, it's YouTube, podcast. Yeah. His show is called Unfiltered. Oh, well, what's up? Sorry, what? I accept DMs. I'm just reiterating. <laughs> and so do I. So do I. We both do. Yes, DM us, please. A DM at Casey Stern. DM at Dog Surf Rocho. Casey, brother, thank you, man. That was fun. I hope to have you back on soon. And, and just, again, congrats on the beautiful family, brother. That is... That's that's everything right there, man. That's the meaning of life, brother. So congrats and thank you. A anytime, Cyrus. My pleasure to come on and, and happy to be locked on with you anytime.